Hello and welcome to this clip um, reviewing how to extend the carbon chain in synthesis. It's not about one particular area in chemistry, so the blue writing will give you an idea of what things you might want to go back and revise and make sure you've had a read of either before or after we've watched this clip. During the clip we'll cover nucleophilic addition of hydrogen cyanide onto carbonyls and we'll look at the reactions of a new group of compounds called nitriles as well as revisiting Friedel-Crafts acylations and alkylations of the benzene ring. And during the course of the clip, see if you can watch out for when new carbon-carbon bonds are being made, because that's the important thrust of what we're talking about. So hydrogen cyanide is the nucleophile in this case. It's very, very toxic indeed. Um, it's actually so toxic um, that it's never done in an A-level laboratory and even in university or professional labs it's used under very, very tightly controlled conditions. It's a gas and uh, the cyanide ion um, is very, very damaging to many of the biological processes in your cells. In fact, what it does is it uh, shuts down respiration because it interferes with the enzyme responsible for respiration. So like I mentioned just now, it's the cyanide ion that causes the problem. What it does is it inhibits the active site and the enzyme responsible for respiration. So essentially every cell in the body is affected when you um, breathe HCN gas in. So what uh, chemists do to get around this problem is to use sodium cyanide and sulfuric acid. So because HCN is a gas, that makes it extremely dangerous. And uh, although this is slightly safer, we still have the CN minus ion, which we have to be quite careful of. So I just want to take a couple of minutes to, to have a chat with you about the CN minus ion. But before um, I actually reveal to you a little bit about the um, cyanide ion, why not have a go at drawing its dot cross diagram? So there's a little bit of information to help you with that. Um, it has a triple bond between nitrogen and the carbon, but it's going to act as a nucleophile, because obviously nucleophilic addition is going to have to be a nucleophile. And if you think about what a nucleophile actually is, it's something, a species, that has a lone pair that is available to form a data covalent bond. So to do that, if it's going to create new carbon-carbon bonds, like we talked about a couple of minutes ago, um, the lone pair has to be on the carbon. So with those two bits of information in mind, why not grab a whiteboard or a scrap of paper and see if you can write out the dot cross diagram for the CN minus ion. So you needed to have a lone pair of electrons on the carbon, the extra gained electron on the carbon, both carbon and nitrogen have eight electrons each in their outer shells, and the whole ion is in square brackets with a single negative charge. So it's carbon which actually carries this negative charge because it has the extra electron that you can see in the diagram. So for this reason we write the cyanide ion in a special way. So we put the, um, the negative charge next to the carbon when we're using the cyanide ion in mechanisms, not forgetting of course our lone pair. So let's look at how it's applied. So the first uh, example we'll look at is the nucleophilic addition of HCN onto carbonyls, so I'll use ethanol as um, my example. Well, this will work on any aldehyde or ketone. All it has to have is a carbonyl group, a, tr a true carbonyl group in the form of um, um, aldehyde or ketone. So at the beginning of your mechanism, to set it up, set up the start of it, make sure your dipole is in place on the carbon of double bond oxygen, and you have a lone pair or a negative charge on the carbon atom, or both. So the curly arrow starts between the electrons of the lone pair and points to the carbon of C double bond O. That now means the pi bond on the carbon double bond oxygen can break, so the second curly arrow starts at the bond and points to O atom on the carbon double bond oxygen. So in the intermediate that's formed, two things have happened. The nucleophile has now been added, and the oxygen atom has picked up an extra lone pair of electrons, which used to be the pi bond. So this means the oxygen atom is now negatively charged. So because the 
process takes place in aqueous solution, the intermediate can be shown reacting with water, or if you wish, you can draw it reacting with hydrogen ions from the acid, the acid being HCN, the source of the Cn minus ion, or H2SO4, the um, reactant that we reacted sodium cyanide with in the first place uh, to make Cn minus. Either way, you get the same organic product, which is um, hydroxypropane nitrile. So why is, that, why is it named in that way? Firstly, the OH is a hydroxyl group. The longest chain is three carbons long, so you include the carbon on the nitrile group. And the nitrile group itself obviously goes into the name. So this compound is called hydroxypropane nitrile. So think back a second to what happens with water, if water is uh, reacting with a nucleophile. If that was the case, what you'd get is the hydroxide ion formed when the oxygen uh, reacts with the hydrogen in water, leaving the OH- behind, which I've highlighted. So, obviously, um, Cn- is a nucleophile, and there's other nucleophilic um, mechanisms that you've covered, namely the nucleophilic substitution mechanism. So there's nothing stopping the Cn- ion also reacting in a nucleophilic substitution manner as well. So let's look at that now. So what I'm assuming here is that you've gone and had a look at nucleophilic substitution from your work from your first year. So I've just put the mechanism there as it stands. Um, it shouldn't be too difficult to work out what's happening. So the, uh, the cyanide ion approaches behind the carbon fluorine bond to avoid repulsion from the partially negative Cl atom. The carbon chlorine bond breaks. So the cyanide is substituted for the chlorine and a new carbon-carbon bond is formed. Hence why you start with chloromethane, but you end up with ethane nitrile. And as it happens, ethane nitrile is the simplest nitrile structure that we can have. So there's no such thing as methane nitrile, it's ethane nitrile upwards. Right, so um, let's have a look at some of the reactions of nitriles. So the two reactions that you need to remember is the re are the reduction by hydrogen gas in a nickel catalyst and the acid hydrologist using um, WHCl and gently warming. So this is definitely a case of making sure you've uh, you flashcarded these and have gone away and uh, worked on that through boot camping or uh, repetitive learning so that you can recall these products and reagent conditions really easily in an exam. Right, the final part of the clip is looking at the aromatic creation of new carbon-carbon bonds through Friedel Crafts acylation and alkylation. So both of these reactions follow the electrophilic substitution mechanism uh, in a similar way to the halogenation um, of the benzene ring. The electrophile is quite specific, it has to have a positive charge on the carbon so that you form a carbon-carbon bond at this location. So what you need to be able to do in an exam is write out the equation for uh, this particular reaction. So I'll take the mechanism away and put the equations in for you. So I've given you the equations in structural form. Before leaving you for this clip, um, why not grab some paper and draw these out as structures with a halarcane and an acyl chloride of your choice. A little exercise to take away and try. So in the meantime, thanks a lot again for listening and uh, see you soon next time.